Hello, my name is Mandolin Royal, and today is our second weigh-in day for the chicks from Recreational Homestead. And it looks like I don't have any feed left to weigh, so <laughs> that's good. It'll make it a little easier. So the next step here, since they are already wing-banded and that part's done with, is to get them caught into one of my handy little foot blade totes by having them caught. It gets the brooder empty so I can go ahead and clean that out. I have my scale. I have how much feed they got since our last weigh in. And it is good that their crops are not overflowing. That way I am not getting a weight for partially digested feed. So this will be a little more true to what they actually are. So I'm going to keep trying to gauge everything to have them run out on weigh day and then when refill that feeder and they can go ahead and gorge themselves. It is getting crowded in here since mine hatched for my part of this trial. We have the small group of hybrids down below and 45 up here that I'm going to find 28 from. That way the batch size is the same. And the two little ones that weren't doing so hot from the hatch, they're doing great now. I put them in the less crowded brooder. I was hoping to have these guys moved out into the barn brooders today, but we're gonna be below freezing this evening. And I don't wanna shock them at two weeks old. Because while they are generating their own body heat, they do not have the feathers to hold that heat in. And I don't want to chill them. So I'll go ahead and muck this out and put them back in it. And then next way day, if not sometime in the middle of this week, I'll move them over to the bigger brooders that are out in the drafty barn. Because we're on spring warming trends now. But I don't want to fall for false spring. <laughs> So let me go ahead and get these guys caught and then we're, we'll see what we're looking at here today. Everyone is caught. I've cleaned the brooder out. Even though I'm going to move them back out of here tomorrow or the next day, you don't want them sitting in their own filth for even a short period of time. And the reason for that is the ammonia buildup and what that can do to their sinuses. If you can smell a brooder, you're already way overdue for cleaning it because the birds, they are sensitive to it way more than we are. What you smell, they smell 10 times stronger. Cleanliness matters bunches and bunches. So this is all freshened up for a brief stay in here. And I'm thinking I'm gonna start weighing them smallest first. And I'm going to go ahead and start adding some notes about if their legs are turning color already or not. And if I should go ahead and identify them as a call bird. Because I saw one little one that I know for sure is not going to turn out to be breeding quality. And that's alright. That is totally normal and expected. Because you cannot carry the expectation of every single chick being perfect. That is completely unrealistic and not how it works so anytime you're thinking of bringing in birds don't order your max number of what you think you're gonna need order based on how picky you're gonna be for finding the best birds out of that group and I'm a big proponent of the 10% rule so for every one bird I hope to keep I have to order 10 or breed them myself and hatch them myself keep the best one of every 10 so if I need 20 new breeding quality hens, I'm going to have to grow 200 pellets. But that is the fastest way to good results. There's no other way around it if you're starting from unproven young stock. Because you have to treat them all as an individual. You have to wait and see how they grow, what they do, how they perform. So the other hope with these chicks from Chase is I get to treat this experience as if I'm starting brand new 
and I can walk you guys through what that looks like if you're going to take it seriously. And I know some of you are thinking, well, I, I only care about the meat. I'm only doing this for meat. And that's fine, but you don't want to lose the meat, and you want the meat to get better. And I want to teach you how to do that better. What they end up looking like doesn't matter for meat, but it does matter how they grow, how they flesh in, and all those important table traits. Because personally, I got real tired of eating scrawny chicken. <laughs> And then I started taking it seriously. All right. I don't have a way to film this overhead, and it's going to be real boring and tedious going chick by chick. So I'll go ahead and turn the camera off and get started and then show you the results for their two-week-old weigh-in. All right. I got everybody done, and these were the two biggest chicks. This one, yellow number nine, I think. Let me double check. Yeah. Yeah. Yellow number nine, weighing it at an even five ounces, and spunky as can be, whereas brown number one, looking confused and unsure. Definitely a cockerel though. And that's biggest baby at five and a quarter ounces at two weeks old. Are you an obvious boy? Not yet. That'll be wild if this one's a pellet. Their leg color is starting to turn. This is fun. <laughs> nope. All right. They're hungry. You need your meal. So no one lost a wing band. They're all intact. All of the sites for the application look really good I saw no injuries no evidence of picking I know I know you went in with the rest everybody's looking great and we're still at a hundred percent survival I'm starting to think I need to recommend these guys <laughs> they're doing good things so far up there at recreational homestead so I am going to take this inside and I'm going to convert it to grams too I figured having both units of measurement available for the duration of this will be better so I did find two that I'm going to go ahead and say I know I don't need them and that is for being significantly smaller than everyone else and they were kind of like a little lackluster and that's normal in your bottom of the pack for growth so since i did them first they got to go back in and start eating before everybody else but this is looking like a pretty tight window as far as the growth goes there were a couple getting close to five ounces but only two that hit it or exceeded it at exactly two weeks old. This is so intriguing. I am nerding out on this. So I'm hoping this evening I can go ahead and get this converted into easier to read data for you guys, but I do have some other things going on. But I'll stitch it on the back side of this video and then we'll do this again in a week. This is probably going to annoy some of you guys. <laughs> but I'm putting this data in and how it makes sense to me and how my mind works. And I'm sorry if the way it's done frustrates you. So over here in the left column are the wing band ID numbers. This is the first weigh in with ounces, first weigh in in grams. And some of the information for the feed. So they consumed in that first week 2 pounds and 12 ounces. That's the date range. That's the conversion over to ounces to grams. So that I could look at 8.8 .8 ounces per day fed to the whole group. 249.38 grams a day is that conversion. The feed cost 25.81 per 50 pounds which breaks it down to 52 cents per pound. 
So when I get down to the bottom, I'm going to have some additional data there. So for week two, ounces, grams, and the percent of gain over that first weigh-in, and there's a pretty good spread, including a negative, where that chick lost weight instead of gaining weight. So I did start indicating if this bird is going to be a call or not. And at the end of this, we're going to see what our retention percentage was by accounting for everything from this growth data to what the bird looks like, what the bird handles like, to really show the breakdown on getting to your best 10% of chicks because that's what you want to be breeding from. So since this group is from Recreational Homestead, it's a brand new beginning for me so I can walk you through what that looks like because it's not an accurate representation if I'm using my own birds because I've already had years and years with them. So let's pretend these are brand spanking new because they are to me. So for week two, they ate a total of seven pounds. So let's go ahead and scroll down a bit since there's 28 chicks total. And this is where I've added the additional notes. So there's our 28 chick total. We're still at 100% survival. Their total ounce weight, 69.175 ounces. Average weight for one week, seven days, exactly old. The average was two ounces, 0.375. Average gram, 67.33. I have to double check that that's right because it might be skewed. <laughs> I'm still getting a feel for this data collection thing. So that's what they consumed their first week. And that means we spent $1.40 in that first week. And this is only the feed. This has nothing to do with my labor or their use of electric, water, infrastructure, just feed then moving over to our two week and our average gain 66 percent and i don't know if that's good or great average for chicken dumb we'll find out their feed consumption went up 81 percent from what they ate that first week to what they ate that second week that was an 81% change. So our cost for the second week, $3.64. They were eating a pound a day, and that is for 28 chicks. So as I get more data, that's going to get added into this spreadsheet. And I'm really curious to see how these numbers change. So, so far, based on their gains and based on their feed consumption, we're sitting at an FCR of 3.5, which is already better than typical heritage type birds that tend to average 4.5. This number may change, may go up, may go down. We'll find out. That's why we're doing this. And then we're going to end up with our feed costs to raise these birds out to whatever age you want. And we're going to have that FCR through the duration of growth. So that will show us when the most economical harvest age is. That'll also be pretty neat to see. So I did share these results with Jeff Maddox from Fertrell to get his thoughts on it. And he said with the spread and the range of variables, because if you look, 80, 55, 82, 85, 77 percent, that's a pretty big spread. So he said that is indicative of not having enough feeder space. So today when I get out to the barn and I double their space, I'm going to double their feeder space too. And then we'll find out next week if that had a effect on tightening this spread. So that's intriguing, interesting, and we'll find out. <laughs> 
Now, it was also really neat to see that the biggest gain, where is he at? All right. So that's tag number BL7. Week one, week two, 160% increase. But that is not the biggest chick. The biggest chicks at five ounces and five and a quarter ounce, they had a gain percentage of, let me check my note here for quick access. Tag number BR1. 82%. That's the absolute biggest chick in the batch at five and a quarter ounces for two weeks old. Second biggest had a 90% gain. But what is going on with BL7? So that's going to be one to watch. Now, I have never tracked a batch of chicks as closely as I am tracking these and as closely as I'm going to track my own batch and what these numbers are saying is really really interesting but I don't want to bore you too much so stay tuned next week we'll add another row do some more math and keep going through this season of science so feel free to like and subscribe as we get through this